in this in the neighborhood, we are down in Pinal County this morning where folks are trying to really research climate change and the real life impacts it currently has and could have if things don't change. I'm with John Adams from Biosphere 2 this morning. A lot of people have heard about Biosphere. They don't really understand exactly what it is. So explain what is this connected so, environment? Yeah, so I think, you know, most people have heard about Biosphere 2 from the people who lived inside. So. You know, almost 35 years ago, eight people were sealed inside of this environment, and that garnered a lot of headlines. But today, Biosphere 2 is owned and operated by the University of Arizona, and it's the world's largest research facility that's dedicated to understanding the impacts of climate change. So think of Biosphere 2 like a time machine. We can change the conditions in our ocean right here. We can change the conditions on our rainforest like that, of which we predict they're coming. And then we can look at how those systems respond or how certain organisms respond. So you guys are looking ahead to maybe not worst case scenario, but what if this happens? How can we live in that environment and make it sustainable and maintain the ecosystem? Well, that's exactly right. So how resilient, what's the elasticity that these systems have? Um, how is the rainforest going to change? Which plants may or may not survive? How are corals? in the ocean going to survive as temperatures increase and which ones will survive and which ones are gonna die off. Yeah, so two and a half hours that's outside of Phoenix. We're on the beach of essentially an ocean and most of the work done here is for coral reefs or what else are you trying to learn from this? Yeah, so in our ocean system, we're gonna be focusing on corals. We're working with our partners um, in Florida uh, on the Keys. So we've got Moat Marine and so they're sending us corals and we're doing tests here. In our rainforest, you know, we're looking at two things that I know are really near and dear to a lot of people's hearts. So we're looking specifically at how does coffee and cacao trees respond to temperature and changes in temperature. Um, we can't lose our coffee and our chocolate. No, those, I, are, I know. Those, are <laughs> those are really important to a lot of people. Yeah, so what we can do inside Biosphere's rainforest is we can change the carbon dioxide, we can change the moisture, we can change the temperature. And we're not looking at just one individual tree as you often, um, only can do in a lab, but here we have over a hundred different species that are interacting with one another. So it gives us a really unique opportunity. It's the world's largest research lab, again, dedicated to understanding global climate change. You guys also have a desert scape. Obviously we live in the Sonoran Desert, so we're familiar with it, but you're trying some new things too with adding water. What do you, what's your research with our environment? Yeah, so we worked with some faculty at the University of Arizona. Uh, he's the world's, well, for sure, the Southwest foremost experts in fish and, and especially endangered fish. We just added a stream and we'll be adding fish to this stream, these endangered species here in the fall uh, once everything acclimates. We've got another system which, you know, we all know how precious water is here in the Southwest and the people who study that, these hydrologists will tell you, once it goes below the surface, they know very little. So we have the world's largest indoor earth science experiments called LEO, the Landscape Evolution Observatory. And what it's designed to do is it rains in the mountains, how much ends up downstream for you and I to use and what impacts the quality of that water, especially as we see land changes. Yeah, because again, that is on the top of mind for a lot of people as we hear about the water concerns here in Arizona. This is more than three acres, this entire facility. You guys have a lot going on here. We do, and that's three acres under glass. What's really exciting about the Bias for Two site as a whole is we've got folks that are doing space situational awareness and tracking object in space. We have another facility that's just adjacent to it that is designed as an analog for the moon or Mars. So when we eventually build a habitat um, on the moon or Mars and we become an interplanetary species, exactly what are we going to need to do? So this facility is designed to help address some of those questions because it's hermetically sealed. And it's only one of two actually in the world that's designed to be completely airtight. And we've had three teams live inside for short periods as well. It's called SAM, the Space Analog for the Moon and Mars. How can people come visit? What do they need to know before they come down? Yeah, so Bias for Two is a great place to visit, a great place for families. You can visit our website. All the information is there. We've recently launched two apps, one specifically oriented uh, to our, our visitor, but we also have have a kids app, a K through 12 app. And so both of them are great and I think appropriate for all audiences. Yeah, but nothing beats an in-person visit. I've heard about this place for so long. I'm excited to finally be here. If you would like to check out Biosphere, come on down. It's not a bad drive out of the valley. In the Neighborhood is sponsored by Pinal County. If you want more information on planning your trip to do fun things in Pinal County, go to explore.pinal.gov.